on when you uh, choose to open those doors. And so, uh, again, be kind to those that are in leadership. Uh, this is the first time, uh, and I don't care how good a pastor you have, how, how seasoned he is, uh, this is the first time that he's dealt uh, with the pandemic. And so uh, we're trying our best uh, to make sure that uh, we weigh safety with uh, also the practicality of it, because uh, we do know that the word needs to go to go forth. Um, one, one note, and, and um, look, the, the word of God transcends, it transcends all. And we, under, we understand that. But uh, I also believe that the word of God speaks to where we're at right now. And so I think we do, um, we do the congregation, we do the pews and, and injustice if we don't uh, tackle it. Now, we're not, the, we're not the Herald leader, we're not CNN, but at the same time, I think we need to speak to the hurts of people and speak to injustices. If the church is not doing that, then um, shame, shame on us. Um, this past week, unless, uh, unless you, just, uh, you just do a fantastic job of, sh of shielding yourself uh, from the news and social media and all that, um, uh, most should be aware uh, that the country uh, is... Uh, continues to be divided. Uh, we're praying for those, uh, uh, even now, in the uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota area that, uh, that are expressing anger, uh, expressing a distrust, uh, that, uh, um, that are in the midst of riots and, and protests and all that. Uh, we're praying for, for them. But we're also praying for this country. Um, uh, hear me, hear me. Um, we cannot continue status quo. What, what we've seen this past week, and look, our prayers are with uh, uh, Mr. Floyd's family. Uh, but what we saw last, uh, this past week, this is, this is not an anomaly. Uh, America uh, is, uh, your, your hands are bloody, and, and we've got to do a better job. We have got to do a better job, and we have got to deal um, with the uh, systematic, uh, systemic uh, of racism in the core of it. Look, I was talking to a good, good friend. Look, when, when, you, when you're struggling, you need to be careful who you talk to. And I had a close, close friend, a close minister that I was speaking with yesterday. He, he, uh, in one of his studies, and then I reminded him that he was the one that really kind of pointed that up to me. Uh, when you talk about racism, that is a sin. That is a sin in America. And, and look, I don't care if you're the top preacher in, in your area. If you are not actively dealing with, uh, with racism and dealing with it at the core and preaching against it, uh, uh, shame on you. And, and the last thing that I want uh, when I get to that gate, because we will be held accountable leaders. Uh, we will be accountable not just for what we've done, but also what we've led others to do and what we've taught. And um, heaven forbid if we get to those gates and we hear that uh, uh, we did not, uh, we, we were not honest in our approach. So it's my prayer. It's not. It's my prayer. Not just um, African American, uh, traditionally African American churches, but all churches are speaking against uh, this uh, this racism and, uh, and speaking against hate. So again, our, our prayers are with um, uh, Mr. Floyd's family, and just our, our prayers continue to go out as a nation. Uh, we are we are in this boat together, and. Uh, I, I, I dare not think what, what happens if we don't uh, try to press towards uh, uh, solving this stuff together. Let's pray. Father God, again, we just uh, we thank you for uh, what, uh, what you're going to do through these next 40 minutes, Father God. We, uh, we just pray that all that we do and all that we're saying, Father God, is going to be acceptable in your sight. We're praying even now, Father God, for those that join us in the study. Father God, I, I'm grateful for a, a praying church. I'm grateful for a studying congregation. Right now, Father God, I'm just thankful that you've got uh, so many uh, uh, right here at Cedar Top, Father God, that are joining right now with Bibles open and notebooks open, Father God. And so I'm just thankful. I'm thankful for how you just continue to nurture us through your word. Father God, you continue to be so kind to us, and we thank you for it. Father God, we pray your blessings upon this nation, Father God. You, you know where we stand, Father God. You know where uh, leadership is, is cracked. You know where 
leadership, Father God, is not doing the job that it should be doing. Father God, you know where the racism and the hate is rooted uh, in this, the fabric of it, Father God. And so we're just praying uh, that you just give us the wisdom, Father God. And we heed the warnings, the warning signs, Father God, to turn to you. Father God, I pray for, I pray for these young people, Father God. I pray right now for their hearts and their minds. Father God, I pray for so many that are hung, that are angry, so many that are troubled right now, Father God. Uh, heal like only you can, but at the same time, Father God, you, you call us to be people of action. So, Father God, we pray that we can be obedient to that. And again, God, bless this happen. We're praying, Father God, that, that something will be said and something will be done to encourage someone in their walk. And as always, if there's somebody here who does not know you in the part of their sin, we pray. We pray that they get this thing right. Father God, we're not looking necessarily for membership uh, in the roles to grow. And, and although we, we thank you in advance for how you work in that area, but Father God, we're looking for people to nurture relationship with you. And so we're praying right now that we be about our Father's business. It's in your God and Son, Jesus' name we ask all these things. Amen. Amen. And amen. Just, uh, just briefly, let's let's go ahead and, and recap again. Uh, we continue. We're on week four of teach us how to pray. Uh, for those that do have that right now media account, uh, we pray that at some point you have uh, begin to take a look at that. Um, the right now media is teach us. It is called teach us how to pray, and those videos are about nine to ten minutes or so. So they're uh, real good snippets and, and, and very interesting. Uh, that, that leader does a fantastic job with that, so I, I pray that you have uh, also used that to supplement uh, what we're doing here on Wednesdays. Um, uh, last week, we looked at uh, your, kingdom, uh, your Kingdom Come. I'll tell you what, let's do this. Uh, let's go ahead and read it uh, in its entirety, um, and, and so we can kind of uh, understand. I know we're kind of breaking it up, or we are breaking it up in pieces, uh, but I think it's good to read it in its, in its entirety. Our Father, uh, we're looking at Matthew 6, um, starting with verse, uh, let's go ahead and start with verse 9, and we'll read through, thir through 13. In this manner, therefore, pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forget, forgive our debt to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil, from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And I read from the New King James Version. I know most, many of us, and especially those in my age group and, and maybe a little young, older, uh, what we memorize is in the King James. But uh, so, uh, so it, it, it is uh, very close, but a few words are, are off, um, are different, not off. Um, but last week we, we looked at uh, we looked at this idea of your of your kingdom, your kingdom come. So we looked at part A of uh, verse 10. And just to kind of recap, and a lot of what we talk about today with uh, your uh, on earth, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, um, a lot of that um, obviously ties in. It's the same verse. And so we'll, uh, we'll kind of play off, uh, play off both of those, if you will. But just to recap last week, and, and it was a good study, good study last week, um, followers of Jesus are, are called to enter into a space where Jesus, where Jesus is king. Um, and, and, and we did wrestle with it. We didn't go into depth on it. And one of these days we will do that uh, prayerfully. But, uh, but we understand that there will be a physical kingdom uh, that will be established. We, we, do, under, we do understand. Uh, uh, but last week we, we really focused on, focus on this idea of the kingdom being where God's reign is at. Right? And, and so that's, uh, that's that idea that, that, that uh, we can be walking in the kingdom in the kingdom now, right? Followers of Jesus enter in a space where Jesus is king. We talked about how uh, that Jesus is the gateway to that kingdom. I know we're in a time now where it's unpopular, and and, uh, and and look, I've got a lot of I've got a lot of friends that that uh, uh, they, they they blend some stuff, and they don't they don't necessarily believe that Jesus is the only way. Uh, but look, when you talk about this book, uh, it's, it's quite clear that Jesus is the only way. And, and, and we can uh, we can talk and debate and argue that all, all we want to, and we can, we can talk about how that's unfair and, and and what do we do with those people groups that that, 
that don't know about Jesus, and, and we can talk about that, but when it's all said and done, uh, the book that we have right here uh, uh, um, explains to us that there's only, there's only one way. There, there's only one way. And once you start trying to come up with other ways, uh, um, you're a heretic. You, 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 you're, you're speaking stuff that's contrary, contrary to Scripture. Uh, see Matthew 30, 13, 40, uh, or Matthew 13, chapter, verses 44 through 40, 45, where it talks about the kingdom is like a treasure. And then just to, just to recap, recap that, let's look at that real quick. Uh, and again, a parable is going to be what? A, a, uh, an earthly story with a heavenly, a heavenly meaning. But in Matthew the 13th chapter, verses 44 uh, through 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found. And he, and for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful, beautiful pearls. And so we just, we get a, a snapshot, if you will, of how we are to, to treasure, to treasure that, that kingdom. Uh, and even treasure the kingdom experience. Is our hearts aligned allegiance to his kingdom and we learn to live as citizens as citizens of that kingdom. We'll talk a little bit today about how that, how that looks. Uh, the application that we are uh, left with and, and, and what, if you will, the assignment uh, that I threw out there is how does, uh, and, and ask you all to evaluate, and ask me to, to evaluate, how does our life look differently when Jesus is ruling every area? How, did, how, how does our life look differently? And it, and it better look different. It better look different. Uh, how does our life look different when Jesus is ruling every every area and every pocket or corner of our of our life. And so, uh, so quick, I, I wanted to look. Let's go ahead and dive into this. Uh, that was a review of your kingdom come, uh, part A of, of verse ten. Now let's look at part B of that of that same verse uh, verse. Uh, uh, so really, part B and C if you're if you're breaking that up um, uh, like a seminary student. So your will be done on earth as it is in, in heaven. We often ask God for stuff and not his perfect will. And, and, and we talked about that. Um, again, one thing you want to make clear, um, this is what we call the model prayer. I know some call it the disciples' prayer, a lot call it uh, the Lord's prayer, but, but, but we refer to this, if you're being, um, if you're being technically correct, um, as the model prayer model prayer. I just told a group about uh, 45 minutes ago, uh, when we talk about a model, um, our prayer should have elements of this. And, and now that this is the, the prayer that you're still praying, and this, and this is your start, this is a good start. Don't, don't let anybody shame you uh, for, for your prayer life. Uh, but, but there should be some growth where, where we get off the, 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 we get off those prayers where we don't even have to think. We just say it. I use that example because a lot of us do it. I, I use that example uh, uh, for a lot of us. Uh, uh, we, need to, we need to watch our, our eating habits. I need to watch my eating habits anyway. Because sometimes I'll, I'll just throw that little quick prayer there. I'll mute that, I'll mute that TV. I won't turn it off. I, but I'll mute that television and throw in that little quick prayer uh, and, start, and start chewing on that food. And, and um, look, I, I'm not saying that we need to, we need to go into... To, to, uh, Meditation and, and, and do 60 minute prayers all the time. I, I, I'm not saying that, but I, I am saying that if we're talking about prayer and talking about having conversation, this is we're pulling in, we're pulling in studies from the week before uh, and the weeks going back. But if we're talking about having conversation with God, if we're talking about having conversation with the, with the one that who, look, whatever the beginning was, he was already there. That's what, that's what Genesis says in the beginning, God. And, and, and we just fly past that. But that tells us right there that whenever the beginning was, God was already, he was already there. And, and, and so when we talk about praying to him, uh, we have to be careful just throwing, that, throwing out that little quick little prayer and then getting and jumping on those ribs. Um, and, and so, so this, this idea that, that when we're talking about the model prayer, our prayer needs to have elements of this. Um, and it, it now, I mean, Jesus is talking to the disciples, so the disciples can use this as a model, but we can certainly, certainly use this as a model. But, but we need to grow. We need to grow from those, those prayers. Look at something. Uh, you've been in the church for, for, for 50, 60 years, and, and, and you got folks now that know your prayer. 
you know, everyday prayer on, on Sunday. And so we need to we need to be careful. We need to be careful with that. When living as citizens of the kingdom and dying to self, we experience God's will here and on earth. All right, and here here in the now. When living as citizens of the kingdom and dying to self, we experience God's will here on earth. We must allow the teachings of God and partner with Him in bringing about the realities of His kingdom on earth. Um, uh, there was a, uh, it was not mine, I'm going to preach it one of these days, and I'll, uh, I'll give credit. I can't, I can't remember who's, who I heard it from, uh, but it's, it was recent. Look, we, when we're praying, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in, in, in heaven, um, we're praying that we're part of the solution. Think about that. Think, think about that. We are praying. We are praying. We're talking about this kingdom and being part of the kingdom and, 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 and crying, God, your, your will be done as it is in heaven. And look, and we talk about heaven. We're, we're talking about what? We're talking about, we're talking about heavenly beings. We, and, and we're talking about God. We're talking about Jesus. We're talking about angels. angels. That's the perfect will. And we're, and, 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 and we're praying that that be done right here. And we're praying that we're part, we're part of that right there. See, a lot of us, the, the, the issue with a lot of us is that we're, we're asking God's will to be done, but don't, but don't, don't use me. Don't, don't use me. I've got some stuff that I want to do. <laughs> I've got my own things that I want to do. I want you, I want you to get this thing right, uh, Jesus, but hold off. Hold off using, using me. I'll tell you what, don't use me on, on weekdays. Just, just use me on Sunday. See, that's, that's not, when we talk about God's kingdom and the reign of God, that's, that's that compartmentalism that, uh, that, quite frankly, is not Christian. See, a lot of us, we've made up, we've made up what it means to, uh, to walk with Christ. We, we've made up, uh, and that's the problem, that's the problem, really, when you talk about uh, Christianity in America. We have literally, and they've got books on it, we have literally created, uh, really, Western culture, not just America, but Western culture. Culture has created its own its own Christianity, and 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 and, and look, they're doing. And I think they've already started, but uh, they they, they uh, a lot of countries now are starting to send missionaries here. <laughs> they're starting to send to send missionaries uh, to this to this country because look, Scripture says worship worship Him in spirit and in truth. And what we've got we've got the big nice churches and nice pulpits and. And, and, and we've gotten all these, and we've got big choirs, and, 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 and we've got uh, four or five million dollar uh, uh, campuses. And I'm not after I'm not after any beautiful facilities. I, we've got a beautiful place here. We don't need to be jealous of anybody. I'm not I'm not after that. But what I'm saying is that I'm saying that a lot of us have missed the boat. And, and it's quite evident that when you start looking at another, a lot of countries and a lot of areas, pockets, on places in the country where uh, where, where Christians are being killed. Folks are having to literally make sacrifices uh, every day. We don't know about sacrifices. A lot of us, if the air goes out, we're not showing up for church on Sunday. If it, if, if, if so and so's not preaching, or, or if I can't be recognized, I'm not showing up. And, and for us, that's discomfort. That's discomforting, and, 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 and so we can't we can't worship Him. And, and, and quite frankly, there, there's a problem with that. So we must allow the teachings of God to. Uh, teaches of God and partner with Him in bringing about the realities of His kingdom on earth. We pray according to God's will. Uh, we must pray according to God's will if we expect an answer. Look at First John. Um, if you're if you're studying with me, write it down and come to it later. I'll read it. First John five and fourteen. Look, look at this. We're talking about again God's God's will, uh, and we understand that God has a sovereign will. Um, right? I mean, we understand that, 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 that there's going to be God's sovereign will that um, um, you, you can pray that it come, but, but look, God's going to do what God's going to do. We understand that. And so the question is well, why you would pray. Number one, we're called to pray. But number, uh, number two, one reason we pray is we're praying that we get into His will. Alright, so let's, let's, let's understand that. See, a lot of us, we, we, we sit down thinking we're going to change God's mind and He's going to go ahead and, and Give me that Camaro and, and, and give me that, that four, four or five million dollar home. He may give it to you, uh, but, but it's not because you twisted his arm. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. 
Now this is the confidence that we have in him, and that's capital him, that if we ask anything, listen to this, according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. <coughs> Again, that's first that's first John 5, 14 and 5 through 15. We pray according to God's will. When we do that, if we expect an answer, we pray according, according to his will. Again, a lot of us, um, uh, the, the, the problem we keep saying, well, why are my prayers not being answered? Um, and, and look, you want God to answer the prayers of your time. But a lot of us are not praying anything near, near God's will. And, and, and we're expecting God to bless some, some stuff that's not over. And, and, and uh, we're expecting God to, to bless some stuff that's not in his will. You're saying, and we're going to talk about this in, in a little bit more, but we're saying, well, how do we know, how do we know his will? And I just told the group again about 50 minutes ago, um, scripture. A lot of us don't, we don't read scripture. And so we want to know, well, what does God, what does God say about this? Well, what does the book say? Um, one, of my, uh, one of my mentors, or it was, it was Dr. Peoples, uh, he, used to, he used to say it all the time, what does the book say? What does the, what does the book say? So we, uh, we pray. We pray according to God's will if we expect an answer. Um, and, uh, we learn to, or learn to pray scriptures to ensure that we're in conformity with God's will. And again, I talked about that. And there's, there's a great book by Whitney. Um, Daniel Whitney, I believe is his name. Uh, Donald Whitney. Uh, he does a great book on praying, on praying the scriptures. And one of these days, I'm going to pull that out. Uh, and we're going, to, we're going to just do some examples of that. Um, but, but one thing when we talk about uh, um, praying the scriptures and learning how to pray the scriptures, it, it ensures that you're in conformity with God's will. Yeah, that, 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 that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that we don't we don't just. And in fact, the Psalms have have uh, lament and, uh, laments and cries in them. You know, sometimes uh, you know I, I, that's why you need to you need to hide the word in your heart because. Sometimes you don't have time to run and get this. You're just crying out to the Lord. And, and so we, we don't want to get robotic in what we do, but at the same time, we want to we want to make sure that that time spent with the Lord is refreshing. See, a lot of us don't don't enjoy our prayer life because we're we're bored with it. We keep asking for the same old thing. God bless this. God bless that. And you're done. And I'm done after about 15 about 15 30 seconds. And then we wonder why we're back wrong. And so, so we learn, we learn to pray, to pray the scriptures. And when you learn to pray the scriptures, when you, when you read and you meditate and you pray on a passage, again, um, it, it, it helps ensure, you know, now we can still mess it up. If you, if you pray a passage um, and then you tell, uh, you, tell, you tell the Lord to go get your enemy uh, right now and deal with them, uh, you know, you may end up with child support or whatever, and that, that, that's, that's not going to be in the will of God. Uh, but 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 if we if we're, our hearts are right and we're reading and we're, we're uh, enveloping that and taking that in, then that's going to help ensure that we're in we're in God's will. See how we are able to do God's will on earth as it is in heaven. Proverbs, and this is going to be one that is is familiar uh, familiar to, to many. Proverbs three five and five and six. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your, under, your own understanding. But in all your ways acknowledge him, and he'll do what? He shall, he shall direct, direct your path. That's the New King James Version. Um, so see how we're able to do God's will on earth as it is in heaven. We, we do it by trusting in the Lord's will with all our heart, and then we learn. Uh, and then we, we, we don't do it on our own, and we acknowledge, we acknowledge him. He directs. He directs our path. Look at Matthew 6 and 33. Again, that's one that's familiar. Uh, to, to many, you know that by heart, don't you? Um, let's seek ye first uh, the kingdom of God. Um, New King James Version says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things uh, should be added, added uh, unto you. So how are we able to do God's will um, on earth? We, we talked about that sacrifice. We, we talked about what we seek. Last week we looked at that. Uh, that the problem with many of us is that, that we're not... Uh, we're not able to pray that, that the kingdom come because we, we've got our eyes focused on stuff that has nothing to do with kingdom building. And, 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 and we're cloudy. 
We're clouded with stuff that's not of God. Um, one thing that I've asked God to do in this season is, is, is to help me help me get rid of stuff that has, has nothing to do with kingdom building. If it doesn't have anything to do with kingdom building and growth, then I, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to cut that stuff off. And, and a lot of us, our are, 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 are lenses are, 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 um, are cloudy. And then we don't, we, we, we take no time to be focused on God. Take no time to be focused, focused on Him. And it shows. It shows because, because of our, our, our perspectives. We use that term. Our perspectives don't don't go through don't go through that that filter, if you will. Look, you should be able to watch somebody, uh, and, and after a while, you, you you can determine where they're at. See, the problem with a lot of us is people have watched us, and although we say we're Cedar Top, we say we're Main Street, we say we're consolidated or whatever. I'm not after anybody's church, but but we say we say we're that, but then they watch us, and we and we look just like the rest of the world. See how dying to self helps us to do God's will on earth as it is in heaven. And, and then we've already talked about that, that dying, that dying to self. Now see the evidence of God's reign in a believer's life. The evidence of, 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 of that reign. That's what I was talking about, that evidence. Look, I'm at the point now where I, I'm just smiling at folks when they tell me stuff. I'm just smiling. Because now I, look, you, you, you said it long enough, I want to see some action. And the same thing with me. I look, uh, uh, you can only talk so, so, for so long. At some point, at some point, there's got to be some action. And it's got to line up with what you see. That, that's why I'm learning, I'm learning just to smile. And just tell folks, well, you know, I'm not, that's interesting, I'm praying. If you ain't figured out, that's kind of my thing, I'll just say I'm praying. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, I ain't. But, but sometimes, it, it, sometimes it doesn't call for you to... Now, sometimes you, the Lord, the Lord does call for us to, to deal with folks where they're at. No, no, don't, uh, don't, you know, don't go through life. Uh, look, even Jesus himself walked in and turned some tables. Yeah, that's, now he had some righteous... He had a perfect anger. Um, but, but, so we're not called... We're, you know, we're, we're not called to be soft to the point that everybody steps on us. See, that's the problem with a lot of us is we've been docile and, and we've been meek, if you will. Um, and when it's when we weren't supposed to, and we, we, we understand that there is a meekness, we understand all that. Uh, but at the same time, there's a boldness. That's probably a better word. Uh, there's a boldness that, that we should have. Um, and that's a testimony when you have a boldness. See, uh, one of the most impressive things with, uh, with Peter is that, and this is how you know the, the account was real, because you're dealing with some folks that just a couple hours uh, during during Calvary, during during uh, the crucifixion, there was, but they were running, they were running, running scared. And uh, we're we're quite, uh, if you're Bible students, you know about the Peter account. He was he was so scared that a, a, a young lady uh, called him out. He said, no, "I don't know that Jesus person." But then you look at it a couple hours later in the Acts account, there was a boldness because Jesus' life had made all the difference in Peter's walk and in the rest of the disciples' walk. And so the same thing with us. There should be a boldness when, you, when, you, when your relationship uh, grows with, with, with Christ. There should be a boldness, a boldness with us. The problem with a lot of, a lot of folks that are close to us, they watched us cower. They watched us, they watched us cower. And that's, that's, that's not good. But the evidence of God's reign in a believer's life, 14 and 26, <coughs> the gospel is recorded by John, uh, uh, verse 14. Look at 26. You, you know this. This is going to be about the Holy Spirit, right? But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I've said to you. We're talking about, again, the evidence of God's reign in a believer's life. That's what? That's the Holy Spirit. And that's, that's how you know a lot of us are, are, are not, look, a lot of us are not changed because the, the Holy Spirit hadn't taken, hadn't taken control of us. We're like, uh, who was that? That was John's, what was that? That was John, uh, uh, John's uh, disciples. What? They said, I, we hadn't even heard of the Holy Spirit. And a lot of us, we hadn't even heard, we hadn't even heard of the Holy Spirit. 
in, uh, in Galatians 5, 22 through 26. Again, evidence of God's reign in a believer's life. Galatians 5, 22 through 26. You, you know this. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those, and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be become conceited, provoking one another, and envying, envying one another. Again, that's that fruit of the Spirit. Um, and we're talking about the evidence of God's reign in a believer's life. And so, again, how do we know that we're, 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 we're walking and doing as this, as this passage? It's one thing for us to say it, but how do we know uh, that, that, that we're truly working towards the will, the will of God? It's the Holy Spirit working on us, and then it's the fruit of the Spirit. It's not us, it's not our church attendance on, on Sundays, per se. Now, church attendance is important. Scripture says, forsake not my assembly. You don't have a problem if you, if, if all the Christians down here you can't stand and you can't be around, I don't know what you're going to do in glory. I don't know what you're going to do. See how the fruit of the Spirit shows, show up in a believer's life and the evidence of God's will on earth as it is in heaven. The fruit of the Spirit is the new, is, is the new reality one experiences. One must be fully engaged with, with the Holy Spirit. So what does God's will on earth look like? And, and, and again, we, we pretty much have already talked about that, but uh, just a few, um, just a few uh, on scripture on that Isaiah 1 and 17. And look, this is fitting. This is fitting where we're at right now. But uh, again, how does, how does God's will look like on earth? And we can pull a number of scriptures, but I think this is fitting. Isaiah 1 and 17. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Plead. Plead for the widow. <laughs> That's God's will. That's how it looks when we're, we're talking about God's will on earth. See, again, a lot of us, a lot of us have created our own little pockets of Christianity. And so we believe that, that you know, we, we, we planted some stuff and, and, uh, and we've got this and we've got that and we've got a little formula. And as long as we do the formula, we're going to, uh, we, we feel like we're going to make it into the kingdom. And, and the more that I study this, the more that I look at Jesus, and we're called to be more Jesus-like, he didn't, he, he sided with those that were oppressed. He dealt with the outcasts. He dealt with publicans, and he, he dealt with, with prostitutes, and, and he dealt with those that society had thrown, thrown to the side. And so I don't know how we're going, I don't know how we're going to call ourselves the church and be Christians and, and everybody we want uh, in, in our group and in our church, they've got to be of a, of a certain cloth, if you will. And, and, and they've got to have this, and their bank accounts have to be that. Uh, we're, going to, we're, we're going to get a rude awakening. We're going to get a rude, a rude, rude awakening. But Lazarus, the rich man in the Lazarus, that's a great account for us. Probably start reading that about once a week in our churches, but that 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 that, that poor man, that poor man, um, and he had a rough time on this side. And, and, and the count, the count tells us that that, that that when it was all said and done, he he ended up in Abraham's bosom, which which uh, uh, we understand that to be paradise. And, and and that rich man who had everything it appears on this side, I uh, ended up in, in hate. Hades or, or hell. And, and he said, uh, and I believe it's the same account, he said, look, I just want to be able to go back and, and, and tell, tell my brothers that you don't want to come here. And the gulf was such, there was such a divide that there was no way, the dead, the dead know nothing, there, there's no way that he could, he could speak to those on this end. So what, what I'm saying is, is that what we're at, what we're wrestling with, what most of us are going for, and most of us are trying to attain, is temporary. And, and, and many of us have, have sacrificed a, a permanent, a permanent spot in paradise for some temporary stuff down here. And, and, and I don't know about you, but I, I'm getting to the point now where, look, I, 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 I don't. If it's not of the Lord, I don't want it. I don't. I don't want it. The attitude we are to emulate. 
and the attitude of uh, and, the, and the attitude of considering others before ourselves, and that's Philippians uh, two three through eleven for those that are, are studying. Philippians 2, 3 through 11, the attitude that we are to emulate. When we adopt the attitude of Jesus, we allow others to enter and experience God's kingdom. So think about that. Think about that. We're, we're praying. We're praying that, that thy will uh, be done. Um, uh, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And, and God allows us to partner with that, and, and, and we're the ones uh, that, that 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 help usher that, if you will. Don't don't pull a tech on me. I, I, but but uh, uh, we're not we're not gods per se. Uh, but but God allows us to to be a part of that, and, and others get an opportunity, get an opportunity to walk, uh, to walk in that um, uh, because of our witness, because of our because of our witness. Jesus made his request of God and then fully submitted to God's will regardless of the consequences. Look, look at this account. Sometimes we just fly past stuff and we don't, we don't, we don't really chew on it. But you've got to love, you've got to love the study. Luke 22. Of course, we know that's one of the, it's one of the gospels, right? 22 and 42. Look, look in that. It says, saying, Father, if it is, this is red letters. This is Jesus, right? This is the garden of this is the garden of Gethsemane. Praying in the garden. Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but, but yours. Yours or your will. If you're looking at King James, I believe it says that. Your will be done. That's, that's something. Jesus made his request of God, and then he fully submitted to God's will, regardless of the consequences. And how many of us really go into prayer? How many of us really go into prayer like that? Say, say God, not, not, not my will, not my will, but your will be done. Whatever, wherever it lines up, we're okay with it. That's really what it means to die, to die to self. That's, that's what it means when you, when you put kingdom, when you put the kingdom first with, with the large cap. See, a lot of us, we're not ready to die. We're not, we're not ready to sacrifice our whole being, and it shows. It shows in our walk. It shows in our talk. It shows, it shows in our, re, our relationship. Jesus, he, he made us request of God. And then he fully submitted to God's will, regardless, regardless of the consequences. So again, at Matthew 6, and that's, that's, that, tenth, that's that tenth verse, um, in B and C, your will be done on earth as it is, as it is in heaven. What we'll do next week, if, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll continue that on week five, uh, we'll go right into the that second portion, give us this day, our daily bread, in, uh, in 11. Uh, but, but one thing I want you to do for this week is, is look, at the, look at your own prayer life. And, and, and look, your, these assignments that we're throwing out per se, I'm not going to ask you to grade, I'm just going to watch you walk. I'm not going to ask you if you're doing it or uh, all, we have, all you have to do is just watch and see the growth. And you do the same thing with me as well. That's, that's the accountability. Is look, we, we shouldn't be in the same place this time, this time next year, this time next month. And you're, you're not going to be able to give the excuse, well, you know, I, I didn't grow in that, in that three-month period when COVID-19 kept us from going to church. I, and, and that just means that you, 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 were, you, you were caught in with the, uh, the building itself. And let me help you out. Pseudotop's a beautiful place. The Pseudotop's not going to be in, it's not going to be in heaven. You're not going to be able to sit down and see the top of heaven. So none, none of this, none of this stuff is going to make it, make it into glory. Um, so, so, so you, you better learn. You better learn to worship, worship Him and, and worship Him in spirit and truth. As, as, as John, as John says, if you've got to have a, 
Hallelujah. You've got to have a group in and you've got to have some folks around you so they can, they can see your, your new Pentecostal dance. And I ain't after anybody, a Pentecostal or anybody. But if, but if they if, if they if, if they got to see your Baptist shout and, and you've got to have choirs and all that stuff uh, to get into the spirit, then you're in trouble. You're in trouble. So, so this week, take, take a look at your own prayer life. And, and, and see if your prayers, and number one, if you're not praying, then that's going to be a start with praying. But, but see if your prayers are lining up with God's will and not your will. Think, think about that. When you're, when you're sitting down, be conscious of, of, of that. Uh, is, this, is, this a prayer, is this a prayer that's really asking God's will on my life and God's will on this situation, God's will on my life, God's will in my marriage, God's will in my home, God's will on my children, God's will on this nation. Is that really, is that really the hour? Uh, we talked about that. Uh, our Father in heaven. Uh, uh, a lot of us, we, we don't, uh, uh, we, 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 all we're praying is we's and ours and, and I's and all that. So, so, so what, are the, what are the hours that we need to be, we need to be in prayer for? Um, and so is your prayer, is your prayer in, in, in God's will or is it in your, in your own will? Donald Whitney, and I'll, I'll leave it with this. This is a quote from him. What better way to discern God's will and to confirm our prayers to God's will than to pray God's word? What better way to discern God's will and to conform our prayers to God's will than to pray God's will? God's word. God, again, we, we just thank you that we uh, just continue to um, be serious about study here. Uh, Father God, we thank you for this, this awesome platform, Father God. We, we thank you for, the, for those that continue to study with us uh, week in and week out. Uh, Father God, we just pray that you just continue to nurture us with your word, Father God. We we thank you for how your word comforts us. We thank you, Father God, for how your word builds us up. We thank you, Father God, for how your word assures us that we're yours. Uh, Father God, uh, despite what we are seeing and reading in the news, despite what uh, troubles appear, we can take comfort in knowing that we're your children. So, Father God, continue to teach us how to pray. Continue to teach us what to pray for. Father God, we, we pray that our, our, our prayer life will increase. We're praying right now, Father God, that our prayer life will become rich. We're praying, Father God, that our long time with you uh, will be uh, sacred. We're praying, Father God, that our sacrifices will be the sacrifices that you've called us to, to be a part of. God, again, I thank you for this church. I thank you for leadership, Father God. I thank you for all those that join us by way of Facebook Live. We pray, Father God, that someone is encouraged by this stuff. We pray your blessings over our lives. Forgive us, God, of our sinful ways. It's in your daughter's son Jesus' name we ask all this. Amen. Amen. Amen.